Well, hello again, everybody. This is Clint Finney again for uh, another Eastern Ohio Grazing Council web presentation. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about what does a properly grazed pasture look like. This topic comes from some conversations I've had with some producers about uh, what their pasture is looking like now and what they look like now compared to what they look like in the spring. And just thought we might take a minute and talk about what our pastures should look like after a grazing event. So let's get started. As I put this presentation together, I was searching for pictures of uh, what pastures look like after grazing and realized that most of our pictures have animals in them, so they're during grazing. But for the most part, these are my pictures and I apologize for recycling pictures, but uh, I, I took pictures for a reason and I don't take very many pictures. So when I do, I guess it means something. So uh, this is the one I've used before, but uh, this is a spring picture. Uh, this is with our sheep and the cows in the background, but uh, this is right before we were getting ready to move those sheep onto another field. And uh, I, I'm, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here and say that this is properly grazed, but uh, and I'm going to show you some mistakes that I've made as well as we go through this. But this is kind of the way I want a field to look like in the spring. I want it to look like the animals hadn't hardly even been there. Uh, like it, it looks like it's not been grazed even after the grazing event. Spring's an easy time. Um, we we get a, a few weeds and and things can look a little rough, but for the most part, the spring's going to look um, like we've taken a mower through it to to an extent. We're going to talk about that as we go forward. But realizing we're now in the summertime and and that's when things change, we're going to go on to some other slides here in a minute and, and show those summers, but. Uh, if we could always get our pastures to look like this, it would be easy and it probably wouldn't be need to do this presentation, but uh, this is kind of the way we want to look and kind of the way we want to keep in our mind of, of what a pasture should look like with some variations that we're going to talk about. As I was thinking about doing this presentation, I, I kind of put it together seasonal though uh, and, and wanted to talk about uh, another spring slide or two. This is a, a new seeding hayfield. So it would have been a new seeding the year before. I took this picture many, many years ago, but uh, just wanted to show it's kind of what a, a hayfield would look like. We, we kind of graze this field just to defer first cutting hay by a week or two, maybe. Uh, but notice the, the bare patches in between. This is a tall grass, mostly orchard grass, uh, new seeding. And, and that's sort of the way that it, we would expect the hayfield to look if we graze it early in the spring. Uh, you can see that we still have a four inch height or so, but being a new seating, it's not completely full, filled in and, and it's going to look a little bit rough, uh, but probably a, a proper graze kind of example of, of what that hayfield should look like early spring. We're going to do a lot of before and after here too, but this is the same day, uh, different part of the farm, um, maybe one paddock below that was uh, permanent pasture. And honestly, this is an overgraze kind of example. We got another picture coming up here just so you can see the differences in the forage height. But um, something I took in my earlier days, something I did in my earlier days, something I hope that I've learned from, although I've got had some fields this spring that I overdid things a little bit and we've had to let them recover and fully regrow before we graze them again. But uh, the reason I, I put this in here, you can kind of see the mosaic type pattern to the grass and, and some different colors in, in green and deep green to, to really like almost yellow. And this is something we, we don't typically want to see in the spring. Uh, this spring it had to happen because of the cold snap that we had. Uh, the cows weren't going to be willing to go back on hay. And so we just kind of had to graze through it and hope for the best. And it has worked out to, to an extent. We've had some bumps in the road, but we've been able to get through it. Uh, we'll talk about overgrazing a little bit too in the last slide, but uh, just a, a, an example of <clears throat> maybe we should have moved the animals on a little bit earlier or give them a bigger pasture. Uh, we just really don't want to see that kind of mosaic color pattern to a pasture. Kind of a further out picture from, from the last one, but just a, an area where we took too much. Um, you can see the grass is 8, 10 inches tall in the background and it's probably two and a half, three inches here in the foreground where the, the cows have grazed and um, just something that we shouldn't have done. Something again, that I've learned from something I did years ago and, and, and it's an example of, of what we can do and what we can learn from. But 
if we take this much in the spring, and I know we're in the summer now, but if we take this much in the spring, the rest of our pastures are going to get ahead of us. If we're properly stocked, they're going to get way ahead of us uh, because we took too much and we should have been moving on to other pastures and, and just kind of blazing the tops off of it and, and allowing it to go ahead and regrow. But a good picture example. We're going to move here in the late spring, early summer. Uh, this is just a few weeks, would have been a few weeks ago. Uh, but a field that the spring flush had hit, it's right at the boot stage, right before it started to seed out. And this is a before grazing picture of that field. Uh, just to give you an example and perspective for what we're going to show you in the next picture. But when we're faced with this, sometimes it's it's hard to think that the cows are going to go through and graze that and make it look pretty. And so this is where this topic really comes in is what does a field or what should a field look like? When we get to this stage and even into the seeding stage that a lot of our pastures are into now, uh, what's it going to look like and what's it going to look like uh, after we're done grazing? Same field, maybe a little different angle, but this is after being grazed. So you can see that the cows took probably a third or maybe a little bit more. Uh, they trampled some forage, um, left some standing. Uh, but not very much of that now is going to go to seed. Uh, we've kind of knocked that back into the vegetative state and it's going to go back and grow again before it would grow back. This is early enough that it would go ahead and grow again and go back to seed uh, if we don't come back and, and regraze it. But this is the time when we start looking at, you know, do we clip or do we not clip? Uh, this particular field, I did not clip. I let it come back. It had a few seed heads in it when I came back to it, but uh, not enough to really bother anything, not enough to hurt. And most of what was going to seed uh, was orchard grass or something that I, I don't really mind having that extra seed in the seed bank. Today, this field, if it we're left like this, it's got a lot, a lot of red clover in it. It, it would have a lot of red clover seed kind of come through too. So not the end of the world. There's a little mallflower rose bush there in the end. And, and later on in the season, we went ahead and clipped that field. This picture from, was from a year ago, but... Uh, this is when we start talking about, you know, should we clip or, or do we need to clip or, or what do we want to clip? That's a decision totally up to, to you and to the manager and, and what they want things to look like. I prefer to not clip anything, at least not this early. Uh, I, I'd prefer to go um, later into the summer, early summer, midsummer. Uh, in fact, right now is when I'm starting to, to clip some fields, depending on the weed pressure that's in them. Another summer picture here, and, and I kind of included this for two reasons. One, to show a different species, but also uh, to show a field that we were able to keep vegetative. Uh, something that didn't get to that kind of advanced boot stage that we saw in the last picture. Uh, but this is the third rotation through this field. I think it might even been the fourth rotation through this field, but it kind of kept everything vegetative. Didn't have to worry about things going to seed. Uh, if, if we're able to keep all of our pastures looking like this, then great. I, I put in the slide, good for you. Uh, I, I have a, a real problem keeping everything looking like this. I get some fields that kind of look like this. Some years, some years are sort of like this year where everything just all at once had a seed head on it, no matter whether we kept it vegetative or whether we didn't. And so that's part of what we have to manage. But um, <clears throat> this is just a good example of a field we were able to keep in a more vegetative state yeah does it look a little rough i mean i guess what we are talking about what the proper graze looks like yeah there's some parts that are short there's some parts that are tall uh, but in the end everything out there is vegetative we don't see any uh, seed heads coming yet everything's grazed to the proper height or higher so sort of a good example of, of what we'd like our pastures to look like again a sterling example not not one that we're going to see everywhere now we're getting into later summer um, these are fields that I've used uh, high stocking density to graze but ones that have, have got ahead of us uh, they, they're they're fully in seed mode at this point and we kind of had to go through and stock the cows up a little higher give them a, a smaller paddock move them every 12 hours this particular field was a stockpiled field from the, a year ago uh, we spread manure on it after we grazed the stockpile grass off. And then we rested it uh, through the first rotation in the spring. Didn't graze the cows at all. We did graze it one time. And now this is what we have when we make the rotation back again. And 
I guess it's a good point too that a lot of times when we stockpile and we graze the stockpile, I end up leaving those fields to rest one rotation at least, maybe two in the spring. This particular year, that rest didn't make a difference. It it it, it was ready to go. I I did it just because I had other fields that needed to get grazed anyway, but this particular year, everything kind of came back. Even after the wet time that we had last winter uh, and the field was kind of pockmarked a little bit with some hoof prints, I did spread some some clover in there, frost seeding, some crimson clover too, and I might even put some Italian rye in with it too, just to kind of fill in those pockmarks. But um, this year, it didn't really make a, a difference to, to leave it. Uh, but, this field, you know, is, is advanced. It's, it's in head, but we've stocked the cows up heavy, made the field smaller, and we've made them walk those fields and kind of trample a bunch of forage. And if you're somebody that's really concerned about waste and forage, this is an ugly picture because we've got an awful lot of forage just trampled on the ground. But, uh, and I wish I had had some now pictures. This was two weeks ago. I wish I had a picture of this to show you guys now, but it's now eight to 10 inches tall, uh, mostly red clover that is, has recovered in that field. The grasses are coming. Uh, that mulch layer is, is I think, really going to help us come this summer, especially if things would get dry. And so, you know, if we're looking at what a properly grazed field looks like, uh, th this can be considered properly grazed. You know, it's all in what you, what your eye, what your mind's eye says a field should look like after it gets done. Did we graze it? Yeah. Did we take a third, probably even less than a third? Yeah. Did, is there enough residue there for the forage to regrow? It takes grass to grow grass. Sure. There's enough residue there. Uh, would some people like to do some clipping on it? I I'm certain they would. Uh, and in fact, some of these fields I have went through and clipped a little bit. I just clipped some last night, as a matter of fact. Uh, but, you know, this is just to show the difference in what a what a grazed field can look like. And, and is it right or wrong? No, it's neither. It, it can be exactly what you want it to be. And this is kind of exactly the way I wanted this field to look when I got done. I've said before, I'm not trying to toot my own horn and, and say that I, I did everything right. And I've showed some slides where I, I messed some things up. And this is a perfect example of, of where I did something good 12 hours and where I did something bad 12 hours later. Uh, and, and also, you know, finding pictures for slides is, is difficult sometimes uh, because if I go in, and find them somewhere else, I have to make sure that it's okay with somebody that I put their pictures in my slide sets where when they're my pictures, of course, it's okay to put them in the slide set, but this is a field just over the hill from the last picture, and you can see the cows down below. We're, we're grazing another strip coming up, uh, but uh, this is a good example of on the left-hand side, uh, both of them were high stocking density grazing somewhere uh, over 100,000 pounds of animal per acre, but left-hand side looks really good. Right-hand side, we obviously left them there too long, or we didn't make the field big enough. And it's just something you learn from. You learn what size field you can give them. At home, it's tough sometimes because uh, the left side had received manure last fall. The right side had not. And so when we came out of one and the other, I didn't adjust my paddock size uh, for the increase in growth from the manure that had been applied. But just something that you, you learn from. It's something to show a mistake. And here again, you know, this is an area, the left side's properly grazed. I don't see any mallflower rows or weeds that I would want to clip. Right side, we overgrazed it, but still there's mallflower rose bush there that probably needs clipped off at some point. But uh, just to, to give you an idea of what, you know, what a properly grazed or, or close to properly grazed, I hate to call my own photos properly grazed because uh, Lord knows I make just as many mistakes as everybody else, but uh, just what a field should sort of look like here as we go in the summer when everything's kind of seeded out and, and did we, did we get it grazed right? Yeah. We, did we leave residue? Of course we did. So it, it's, it's still going to be good. It, it looks like a good, a good graze other than that right side. We just, we just left them there a little bit too long. I just took this Sunday. As a matter of fact, I've taken to the practice of a newborn calf if the cow is missing an ear tag take a picture of her so that hopefully she has a defining character that i can pick her out and know which calf pairs up with that cow but um 
this is a field again um probably 250,000 pounds of animal per acre there's a whole lot of litter smashed on the ground um do some people think that's probably ugly yeah i'm sure people do uh is this a field that i would clip mm, yeah as a matter of fact i did last night but uh it's it, it wasn't really needing it I, I just was clipping another field and decided to zip through there at the same time but um we put all that litter down on the ground you can see some kind of sticks uh, sticking up those were weeds that the cows took the tops off of stripped the leaves off of not because they were hungry there was plenty of forage in that field they just did as they were coming by but um just another example of how different a field can look after it's been grazed and, and it's not right or wrong it's just it, we did what we needed to do we got the forage out of it that we need to we left the proper amount of forage there's a lot of green material out there there's something for the grass to regrow on um just to give you all an idea of what what a field can look like after the grazing and in a side note uh, i clipped this field last night because the field that you can just barely see the left there i mowed it for hay um, just as a part of our strategy to kind of get ahead of the seed heads right now and i did it as an experiment too i mowed a portion of that field um, at at this bind height, I mowed a portion of the field, holding the disc bind up three or four inches, and then this pasture is right next to it. It's all one field; it all got manure last fall. So we'll see the difference now in how that field regrows. Even half of it I clipped, and half of it I didn't. So we can go out and kind of measure uh, later what the regrowth is on that particular field. Throw so some multi species back in here. Um, this is our sheep group and. Uh, stalker steer group and and this you can see is an overly mature field this was about two weeks ago um, we grazed the sheep and stalkers through and we weren't trying to take very much we're just trying to graze a little bit the, sh the sheep all have lambs we're trying to get them to grow as fast as we can the stalker steers uh, we're always trying to get them to grow as fast as we possibly can so we we're just going through topping that field trying to get it back in a more vegetative state and you'll see the after picture here next after and some of you are saying boy they really didn't take much they just kind of wandered through and, and and to a point that's that's true although this picture doesn't do the amount of litter that was trampled on the ground justice uh, you walk back into that field now and, and it's eight or ten inches tall both grass and clover uh, but our goal there was just to take the top third of the plant and, and allow those steers to grow as much as they can those lambs to grow just kind of pick out the really good stuff and get the field back in a vegetative state but again another picture of you know what does a field look like after we graze it and, and is it okay that it looks like that sure there's some seed heads there sure what i would would i clip it today sure i would uh, but uh, it, it, it's okay and there's going to be a few seed heads going forward but that's not always a bad thing either we leave some dry material out there if we get a really wet time this summer uh, there's some dry material that the animals will pick at to help their digestive system. So that's not a bad thing in, in the end. <clears throat> now we're going to move on to fall here a little bit. And uh, in the fall, the management gets easy. Uh, to me, it does anyway. Spring's kind of tough because everything's going, growing as fast as it can. Summer's kind of tough because everything's either wanting to make a seed or you're trying to get ahead of the seed heads. By the time we get to fall, we don't have to worry about seed heads anymore. That plant has went into into winter survival mode and it's not going to make a seed head and so our, our goal and our job then is just to kind of graze the good stuff off and, and get off of it and let it come back and regrow and produce some more good stuff to get another grazing or two before winter sets in so uh, a fall graze pasture is going to look a lot like a spring in fact when i'm flipping through pictures like I start to look at the leaves on the trees to tell uh, whether it's fall or spring uh, but here again we just want to take the proper amount leave the proper amount and and move on and, and whether you think you need to clip it or not that's up to you and your management goals and what you're doing i typically don't find i need to clip a whole lot of anything in the fall once i get through summer we're kind of done clipping there's not a, a weed we're gonna to have to worry about we're kind of into fall mode and rest mode at that point but also while we're here in the fall remember we've got to leave some of that plant to be able to regrow for next year and we're going to talk more about that in the winter slide but we've got to leave the proper amount of residue we can kind of mess up in the summer we can kind of mess up in the spring and graze too much but we really don't want to mess up in the fall because that's going to affect 
the amount and, and winter it's going to affect the amount of forage we're going to have next spring and now we're in the winter well you know we're in the winter in the slides but um, a lot of you're going to appreciate these snow pictures here in the next couple of days as we get into the 90s and heat uh, it's kind of odd to be talking about winter at that time but if we're going to graze stockpile grass in the winter time uh, we want to make sure that we again don't graze too much we don't get into those tillers that are down there in that forage plant that are going to be next year's growth those little tiny leaves that are inside that grass plant we don't want to get into them and, and sheep get blamed for doing that way too much and and we have to be careful when we're grazing stockpile grass with sheep that they don't get into it and, and we don't talk about this often but there's kind of two options for winter stockpile grazing we can we can rotate through like we do our normal summer and and go back to those paddocks two or three times if we didn't take it all the first time we were through i prefer to to take as much as i'm going to take that first pass through and not come back to it that's my preferred way to do it but uh, with the sheep it's just easier to, to keep rotating through the fields until they've they've taken whatever i wanted them to take uh, there's differing theories for each one but either one can happen we just need to make sure when we go through that field that we've not allowed those sheep to sheep or cattle either one to graze too much of that forage to get into those tillers to leave bare ground for the winter time i wanted to put the last slide in as kind of the morals to the story um, i started this topic just as i drive around and look at fields and what's grazed and what's not and we get questions in here too and I go out with producers and they say you know did i graze this enough or did i graze it too much and we just need to remember that that our pastures aren't ever going to have that mowed look unless we've actually mowed them with a brush hog or this vine or whatever and I'll contend that if we if we even have a mowed look when we get done with the disc miner or, or the brush hog, either one, we've probably mowed too much. We've probably taken too much. We probably want to leave a little more of that forage out there than what that mowed look is going to give us. To top it off with a brush hog or with a disc vine, that's fine. Uh, but our pastures typically aren't going to have that really mowed, finished look and and be as productive as they could be. Um, they're not going to look the same after each grazing event as uh, we showed in these pictures spring summer fall winter they're going to look different after each event they're going to look different after the weather pattern that we were having so uh, just keep in mind what looks good in the spring is going to look a whole lot different in the summer and then you know this time of year some seed heads sticking up i'll even say some weeds sticking up it's not the end of the world it's not not going to hurt us all that much in the end um, if we've only got a few seed heads sticking up out there, that's perfectly fine. That means we probably manage the pasture as best as we possibly can. So uh, I don't worry about getting out there and clipping for just a few seed heads. It's got to be a lot of seed heads or a lot of weeds for me to worry about getting out there and clipping. And then, you know, if we err, if we overgraze, just remember it, it will recover. It may take some time. But the biggest thing, if we overgraze the field, is just to learn from it. We've got to learn from our mistakes, and we've got to do better the next time. I've talked a lot about clipping. Um, to clip or not to clip will always be the question to each his own, and, and every farm is different. Every farmer is different in what they, what they like and what they don't like and what they can stand and what they can clip, uh, what they don't want to clip. Uh, but that's that's totally a management decision and, and just remember when we go out there we, we want to be right behind the livestock we don't want to wait more than two or three days because that forage will be regrowing and even though we may hold the height of the mower up we're going to be running over it with several tires as we go through and that's going to set those pastures back always remember it's better to take too little than it is to take too much we always talk about take half leave half and for some places that's a good rule of thumb but for the most part we want to take less than half we want to leave more than half and we want to let that forage regrow so always better to take too little and move on to another field than it is to take too much those fields will recover i even get stuck in that trap where i think oh i got to take a little bit more because things aren't regrowing and i've got to go that, that gets me in trouble every time i take too much and then it does take longer for it to recover so uh, i'm trying to always keep myself to leave more residue instead of taking too much and then also remember trampled forage is just going to feed the soil 
we fed the cows or the sheep or grazing livestock with the forage that they grazed and, and if we trample a little bit of forage we fed the soil and that's going to come back as more forage so hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight into grazed pastures and, and what they may or may not look like they're not always going to look the same and hopefully it gives some of you some reassurance in, in what you're seeing out there in your pastures today well that's a wrap for this week's eastern ohio grazing council web presentation as always we'll end by thanking our sponsors and thank all of you for tuning in and calling in with questions or comments or um, words of encouragement we do appreciate it. Thank you all and we'll see you next time.